In this subunit, I'll show you another way that you can use randomness to generate a fractal. It's a process that's known as the chaos game. So here's the setup for the chaos game. We start with a triangle, and I'll label the corners A, B, and C. I'm going to choose a starting point at random inside the triangle, and then I'm going to choose at random one of the three corners, and I'm going to move halfway towards that corner, and then I'm going to repeat that step. So the easiest way to see how this works is to just do it. So I'm going to choose which corner to go to by rolling a die. And I'll say that if I get a 1 or a 2, I'll go towards A. 3 or 4, I'll go to B. And 5 or 6, I'll go towards C. All right. So I'm going to choose my starting point. It doesn't really matter where we start. I'll say there. A little more visible. And then let's roll the die. Uh oh, let's try that again. See if I can keep it on. All right. So I got a one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move from here to there, but only go halfway. All right. So let's see here. I've got a ruler. From here to the corner is about uh, it's about 11 where my thumb is. So I'm going to go five and a half, five and a half. There. So that's the next point. Now we'll do the next step. I'll need to roll again. Boy, I cannot keep it on the screen. Uh, one again, okay. That means I'm again going to move towards A, only going halfway. So, here we go. I am about five and a half. So I'm going to go a little more than uh, two and a half. There, that would be my next step. And we'll keep going. Let's do at least one more. Let's see, hopefully I'll get a not one or two. One again, all right, fine. I'm gonna go halfway to one. Sorry, halfway to A, the top corner. Let's do one more. All right, a three. So now I'm gonna go from here to here, but I'm only gonna go halfway. So let's see here. Zero. Looks like that's about 16. So I'm going to go a distance of eight. There I am. One more. Got a six. So now I'm going to go halfway to this corner. All right, so this is where I am currently. And we're going to go halfway from my current point to C, and that's a little less than 15, so I'm going to go a little bit more than 7.5. So I could keep going in this way, and I would make more and more dots. And the question is, what would happen if I did this for 50 steps or 100 steps or 1,000 steps? What happens to the dots as they bounce all around the triangle? So in order to answer that question, I'm obviously not going to keep rolling the die and drawing with this pen. We'll get a computer to plot some points for us, and we'll see what it looks like. So here's a nice program that will play the chaos game for us. It will do what I was just doing with a die and a ruler uh, much more quickly and precisely. So the program is called Gasket Online. A link is in the um, resources section at the end of this unit. The URL is up there also. And I've set this to initially plot just one point. So when you click on the screen, the X is the starting point, and then you can see that there's just one point that it plots here. If I do it again, 
um, the point is in a different place. Presumably this time it, the computer rolled a three or a four, so it moved in this way. This is a random process, so we don't see the same thing every time. Okay, so one point is boring. Let's look at 10. So there's 10 points. X is a starting point. If I choose starting point again, I get different points. Again, it's a random process. And let's see, let's now jump up to 100. This might get a little bit more interesting. So there are 100 points. It's a little hard to see if there's a pattern, but something is starting to take shape. Let's try something again. There is another. Um, I can set this to put lines on the outside if that, that might help. Here's a, trying it again. So 100 points at a time, it does look like something's going on there. They're not randomly distributed um, around the triangle. It's not a uniform distribution. There's a big hole here in the middle, and hmm, this hole it looks a little bit triangular. That's suspicious. Let's see what happens if instead of 100, I were to plot 1,000 points. Let's give that a shot. Here we go. Well, goodness. It's starting to look like a Sierpinski triangle. Perhaps you saw this coming, maybe you didn't. Um, if you haven't seen this before, it's, it's a surprise the first time you see it, I think. Um, all right, so I'm gonna now click this so that the dots are smaller. And let's go up to 10,000. There we go. So that's 10,000 points, um, an awful lot faster than I could have drawn them by hand. And sure enough, we're seeing a pretty nice looking Sierpinski triangle. And just for fun, because we can, let's do 100,000. And that Sierpinski triangle is looking pretty good. So somehow, th through this random process, uh, rolling a die to decide which corner to move to and only going in uh, half the way there, we're making a Sierpinski triangle. So this is another way of making fractals. Certain random processes like this, this example is called the chaos game, there are lots of variations, can produce fractals, very precise uh, fractals look like they were carefully drawn, um, but they're the uh, product of this random process. In the next video, I'll try to explain a little bit about how the chaos game works, how this random process leads to this very non-random looking outcome.